Welcome to the ninth Java video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to deal with exceptions and how to handle them. And then in the next tutorial um, I'm going to show you how to use this um, new knowledge to read and write data to files and to get input from the user. So let's open up Notepad and let's just create a new class and call it exception handling and then we'll just set up the main method so I can show you how to do stuff right okay so an exception is just an error that occurs in the runtime of your program so you've probably encountered exceptions before when you run your programs and the most common one that you've seen is the index array out of bounds exception and this occurs when uh, you try to assign a value to an index of an array that doesn't exist so to show you this let me just set up an example of a situation where this might occur so I've set up I've um, constructed an, an integer array called array and that can hold three values so I can use the um, indexes 0, 1 and 2 so if I try to say use the index 5 it's going to throw a index array out of bounds exception because it doesn't exist so if I assign the value 10 to it and say it's not going to let me so let's just save that as exception handling dot java and let's just compile that hopefully with no errors okay and then if we run it now then it's going to hopefully what it will it will throw an exception and it will crash the program and it will show a nice error in our command prompt there we go so exception in thread main array index out of bounds exception so that, that tells us that the exception occurred in the main method and that it tried to use the index 5 and that doesn't exist also it tells us it occurred on line 8 of our program and that coincides with the array 5 equals 10 so we know that this line of code is throwing the exception so to deal with this, to handle the exception we, c we can use a thing called try and catch statements now what we do is we use a try statement around the code that could possibly throw an exception okay so and then we use a catch statement to catch exceptions so in this case we want to catch the index array out of bounds exception so we would type exactly what it says here array index out of bounds exception so array index out of bounds exception and we're just going to call that e alright and then inside this catch block is what is going to run if this exception does occur so we just want it to say error and then print out the error on the screen Okay. so then to uh, print out the error on the screen we just use the toString method of the array index out of bounds exception now to use that we can either write e dot toString let me just shift that across so you can see okay so that would work fine but an easier way of doing this would just be to write e because if you try and print out um, if you just use the object name in a statement that prints something it automatically calls the two string method so that's just a shorthand way of writing e calling the two string method so that does exactly the same thing as that okay so now let's compile this again there we go and run it 
and here we go error Java exception so as you can see we've handled the exception now this is useful when looking at file input and output for example an exception could be thrown for a variety of reasons like the file we're trying to write to doesn't exist so if we could catch this exception what we would do is we would create the file and then we could read from it okay also if you know something is going to um, throw an exception but you don't know what the exception is called eventually you'll get to know what these exceptions are called but in case you don't all exceptions are subclasses of the exception class so if you just write exception E as parameters it will catch all exceptions and all exceptions will be given to this so if I save it now ex and compile it exactly the same thing will be printed to the screen okay um, we can use multiple catch blocks for example if I just move that down I can catch the array index out of bounds exception and if I just copy that and write caught in first catch so it's just exactly the same except I've written caught in first catch so we can tell that it's been caught in this first catch statement okay if I compile that again there we go it's caught in the first catch so we can use multiple catch statements after the try statement and uh, once one catch statement has been run it automatically skips the rest so that's why we didn't get both of these lines being printed out so uh, it's probably bad practice but what I usually do in my programs is have catch exception E at the end of the catch statement so any other exceptions that might occur are always caught as I said that's probably bad programming practice but I do it hasn't done me any harm I probably get loads of people saying how terrible that is but that's what I do and I'm not going to change <laughs> so that is how to handle exceptions um, you can also create your own exceptions uh, you just create a class that extends the exception class and then you can throw your exceptions like you would um, I'll do a tutorial on that another time because it's, it's a more advanced topic but that is the basics of exceptions so next tutorial I'll show you how you can use the, these techniques with uh, file input and output and uh, receiving user input from the command line okay so until then I'll see you and just muck around with these exceptions just so you can get the hang of them look at some tutorials online find out stuff ask me questions I'll try and answer them if I don't I'm sorry I'm quite busy <laughs> but I'll see you around